You know? And that's why Commander should be split into two. Commander needs to be split into two separate formats, just like my parents' marriage. Join Dalton and Jacob as they discuss the ever-changing world of trading card games. TCG Buzz starts now. Hello and welcome to TCG Talk. My name is Jacob and this is Bryce. I will ask you to never do that ever again. <laughs> uh, so, uh, we're talking about magic today. And uh, usually when we talk about magic, it doesn't actually do that well. So if you do like this episode and want to see us do more like it, make sure to like this video and all that fun stuff, you know. And uh, if you want to buy some cards to bling out your commander deck, which Bryce is a big fan of, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah, you, you get like the... His decks end up so ridiculously expensive because he has to have the bling. And if you want that bling, use our TCG player affiliate link. You agree? Yeah. All right, so we're talking about Commander today, uh, and I think the first thing we should do is give some context for ourselves as Commander players. We're both huge Commander fans, dedicated a good portion of our lives to Commander because we have no lives. <laughs> uh, but we, we come from very different backgrounds of Commander. Because mm -hmm. I believe your background was more so that it was something that you did when you were younger, and then you kind of just dipped out for a while, and then you went into buddy right. fight, and then you, after, you know... After years, I came back and I really pushed to play Commander, but mm -hmm. even then, I tended to play casual Commander. Mm -hmm. Very low power level, drinking with friends. Right. Casual Commander. And uh, now I'd say I'm kind of in the middle. Uh, I can play high tier Magic, in fact, I enjoy it sometimes. I love a good game of Vintage Cube. Yeah. But uh, I don't really play CEDH. I, I play, well, first of all, I play too much jank for EDH. <laughs> um, CEDH would, would not work with my decks. I like doing stupid things. Well, I do too, as more of like, that's my other thing I like to try to do when I'm trying to do CEDH, because... I don't want to play Thalsa's Oracle combo and bore you all to death till I beat my head into a wall telling you why this should be banned, yada yada. I'd rather play things that I'm like, okay, how do I break this and be like, this is a lot of fun. Don't get, don't get us wrong. Bryce is still a filthy degenerate. His favorite decks are... Show me on the doll where the Crick Storm deck touched you. <laughs> and don't forget your stacks deck. Which one? <laughs> that's, that's my man! <laughs> uh, so we, we do have very different commander backgrounds. Uh, so I think we've got a really interesting spin on this topic because, uh, you know, it's a topic that pops up all the time. Mm -hmm. But we have someone on the more competitive level and someone on the more casual level. Right. Whereas um, I was kind of forced into a more competitive thing. But that's because before, you know, going out and discovering more places as stores opened up and closed down, I, I was just forced to play more powerful decks because at some point I learned about, you know, how to do combos and stuff. And then I would end up, you know, being the arch enemy every single game. <laughs> <laughs> so then I, in response, I'm like, well, I got to make my deck stronger. Otherwise, I'm going to get bullied out of existence. Uh that never solved the issue. However, it made it more bearable. So what we're going to be doing today is talking about Commander as a format and how it should be split into two separate formats. Now, I've heard hundreds of takes on this before. Uh, some are very for it. Some are very against it. I'll tell you right now, so you can get your keyboard warrioring in early, uh, we are both in favor of the split. Yes. But we're going to look at it, you know, uh, try to be fair with it and look at the pluses and minuses because it's not perfect there's always going to be upsides and downsides to doing major changes to magic's best and most popular format 
you know. Uh, so let's get into what that means and what would happen. Right. Uh, so the point here is Commander is such a broad thing that so many people play and so many people play at different power levels and so many play people play with different expectations of what a good game of Commander is. And Commander as a whole just has this huge gray area of said expectations too. Yes. Uh, I think that's uh, definitely something positive from this change is now that you have two, uh, the idea would be splitting into two separate formats, one for the casuals, one for the competitive players. Now, uh, people like me are kind of weird in that, where I'm, like, exactly in the middle. Right. But uh, that gives me flexibility between the two. Uh, but I think, you know, if you're looking to play with a new uh, group of friends and play Commander, if they just say, hey, come on over for a night at Commander, you don't know, should you bring your pre-con or should you bring your storm deck? You know, sometimes even the pre-cons are too powerful for some of our friends back at home. That being said, <laughs> I, I do think there, you know, there's, oh no, Jacob's going to go on a rant about rule zero. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I got this. But that being said, it's more so like the reason why we feel like it should be split anyways, because we're sick and tired of showing up to a table and then they go, oh, what are you bringing? Oh, well, I'm playing yada yada. Well, then I got to bring out this thing because I don't like that. And I'm going to hard target or counter you for the rest of this night. Bryce oh. is just salty and biased. <laughs> no, you know, there is a communication issue. Mm -hmm. I've seen many player groups have a night ruined because someone misjudged the power level of the table. Oh, I've had many a nights um, like that, too. We actually had a guy come in. He's like, oh, mind if I join you? You know, you know, as he casually just speedily walks into the group. And, you know, he's really excited to play or whatever. And it turns out he just wanted to show off his CDH deck. <laughs> Against a guy playing nothing but casual decks. Oh, I won on turn two, guys. Again, this deck is good. But well, there, are, there are other reasons to make the change. Uh, but there are also some negatives. Mm -hmm. uh, one is... You know, someone who's newly joining Commander, uh, it's already quite the daunting experience. You because know. first impressions set expectations, no matter what you play. You have to play a hundred cards, and they can be anything from all of Magic? That's a lot to ask from someone new to the format. You know, because <laughs> it sounds kind of silly to us having played hundreds upon hundreds of hours. They haven't sunk in all this time to learn everything and mm -hmm. everything. Now having to throw in, you know, which format do I choose adds another load to that. But uh, at least they can now stay in the kiddie pool. Right. <laughs> you don't want them jumping straight into CDH. You right, know? right, right. Uh, <sighs> Do you think the uh let's talk about this on Wizards of the Coast side, you know, because we can talk about it as a player group as much as we want, as a player base, but for them, is there an incentive? Money Obviously, go it, money go burr. They're is not their incentive. In charge of commander, but they are in charge of it. Well, you know, well, the thing is, is ever since it took off and what was it? 2012, I think yeah, is when it then, all yep. started, is that it's been such a huge thing that Wizards of the Coast, you know, the guys at Hasbro actually made product for the format exclusively for many years, too. I mean, now we're getting it seems like we're getting commander decks like once every four months now. It's so crazy. I was just thinking about this. Uh you know, the way it used to work is we'd get one set of commander decks every year. Yeah. Right? And now we get a lot more. You know, mm -hmm. they did decks for... They do decks pretty much now all the time. Like, every major set release, they do... You know, Zendikar had them. Ikoria had them. Kaldheim had them. It's a lot to take in. Here's my thought. What For Wizards' benefit, what if they split those? Say, these set commander decks are the casual decks. And then they can take the power level of the pre-cons and set it for a starting point 
for CEDH, much like the Challenger decks do mm-hmm. for Standard. Good idea. I Put feel some like it's lands good. in them, maybe. <laughs> it, I just feel like that also kind of implements some issues as well when you're trying to make the product is because it's like, how do we make new unique cards? Because that's what they have to do. They have to keep introducing new unique cards that somehow don't break the format, but interesting enough that you want to play it. So they kind of have to bend the rules Mm -hmm. while also saying this is worth the $40. Go buy it without being like, oh, boy, uh, another plat." toe thing that enters tapped and taps for three colors yay hear me out they split it into two formats what's the worst that can happen honestly the worst that can happen is that some people get you know upset about it or what have you and then they you know just flood all of twitter over over about it specifically twitter though (laughs) because that's where all the negativity goes these days and I feel like that would be honestly the worst of it because I feel like a lot of people agree, but at the same time disagree. But the people that disagree are all like the social keyboard warriors anyways. You know, um, I have respect for everyone's opinions, but this really is a thing where like there's potentially a lot of benefit to this without much downside. And, you know, people can say, oh, we don't need this. Rule zero is a thing, but rule zero doesn't help. Help. For example, when you're playing with a new play group, you know, what happens when I show up at my local game store on their commander night to play with people? Right. You know, there's a wide range of expectations there. Whereas they can say, this is a pod of casual commander versus this is a pod of competitive commander. That way, when little Timmy shows up with his, give me a really bad tribal deck. Trilobite? Nice. Uh, so I was going to say squirrels, but... <laughs> Trilobite is too specific. Uh, shows up with his his uh, all bad cards squirrel deck. Uh, he's not going to get Hulk smashed into the ground. <laughs> yeah. Uh, at least as bad. And like I said before on that story I was telling earlier, like... That group of guys, they were literally just getting into Commander, and then they sold all their stuff that not later on the next day because that one guy ruined all of their expectations because they're like, it's too broken. I'd rather go back to Pokemon or whatever. I don't have to deal with this crap because I can't beat a deck that wins on turn two every game. You know, the alternate side to Rule Zero is I can use it for my argument as well. And say, you know, just because we have two separate lists doesn't mean you can't ignore that in your own playgroup. Right. My problem with rule zero is that it delivers a lot of headaches and arguments more than it helps most of the time. Because it's like, well, I want to play with these cards anyways. Well, then I want to play with banned cards. Well, then I want to do this. Look, just let me play with my Middle Ages cards. Let me play (laughs) with my silver bordered Tybalt. Let me do whatever I want. <laughs> Let me play with my Yu-Gi-Oh cards. <laughs> um, let's, uh, I think we've gone over some of the benefits, some of the drawbacks, even though we're definitely kind of biased on that. We don't think there are many. Like I'd my, love to hear what you guys think are some actual legit drawbacks to it, but I'm kind of drama. The up only line. other thing I could possibly think of is, because you know Wizards has got to make product, if we, this split ever does happen that they would push the one decks way over the edge and then everybody's got to buy them. So then it's like, what would be the point of buying the casual decks then when the casuals themselves want to play with those cards because they like them? Now consider this. Uh, I think we should look into what that future would look like, you know, uh, if, if this split happened. I don't think there are any cards that would appear on the competitive ban list that wouldn't be banned in casual that'd be kind of weird right well actually i feel like a lot of the stuff that's banned on this i want to say homogenous ban list Mm -hmm. would end up banned strictly for casual yes and that would be it like braids in a competitive format sure it's fast but it's like whatever you have tons of interaction you 
that's to be expected. Like, you always see, like, Force of Wills, Mana Crypt, stuff like that, where in casuals, if they get said big start, then it's like, well, I can't deal with that. My curve is five, and I can't deal with this 2-2 two -two that keeps eating my resources every turn. I think uh, what we'd see is the two lists would have very different goals. Yes. The competitive list very much is how do we make this game good for play yes but it's about the meta state it's also about being balanced being balanced you know everyone's fast but equally fast right the casual ban list is about keeping things fun, fun. uh so there are plenty of cards that power level wise are fine but ruin the casual experience chronosphere <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and uh, we're not saying go overboard with that. You know, not every stats card needs to be banned. Right. And but a the, couple particular, you know. Oh, this is going to start a flame war, isn't it? Oh, we, you we've can been it at the start of this video, Jacob. <laughs> you can ban Armageddon. Honestly, I would be down for that. In casual. I know. And we, Just we knew. in casual. We, we uh, already knew this was going to happen, so. Yeah. I mean, like, at that point, might as well ban, like, strip mine wasteland stuff that kind of like picks on the opponent the other thing you can do with access to two separate ban lists is ban things that are completely unreachable for the casual player you mean like mish's workshop you mean like gaia's crate <laughs> Oof, that's a, yeah. this, this is a big one mm -hmm. bizarre big dad you exactly the, the, the list goes on but uh you, you know there's the argument well you can make proxies right but you want to know something? Uh, if I'm Johnny never heard of Commander and I, will, I have a friend who's pushing for me to get into this game and he says, here's a, a deck list and these cards you're just going to have to print off because they're so expensive you will never be able to afford them. Right. You have to make your own fake ones. That's going to discourage me from wanting to play. And so, like, not only that, but, like, those cards that have, like, those big price caps they are just so incredibly just backbreaking when they land i've never ever been so upset as opposed to seeing my opponent storm off well storm off with his his handful of artifacts in a workshop and he goes <laughs> okay workshop soul ring thran dynamo gurge take rest of the hand and then Here's a threat for you to deal with on turn one, by the way. Yeah. Um, are there any other cards you think would be banned on a casual list should one happen? Honestly, I could see the Eldrazi Titans. the Just the Annihilator ones. Hmm. Because, like, yeah, Cossack the Great Distortion's annoying, but it's just draw up to your hand size and kind of counter things sometimes. Or, like, Ulamog the... The Ceaseless Hunger is a bit mean, but he only eats away at the deck in, like, two permanents. Whereas the other one just says, if I ever get this out early ever, you are out of this game the rest of the game. We're not the type of players who are, if I don't like a card, ban it. You know? Yeah. Uh, in fact, I like suffering sometimes. <laughs> you know? Sometimes it's entertaining. Uh, but... There are some cards that do legitimately ruin the experience mm -hmm. for casual play. In competitive, anything goes, you know? Right. Uh, what's a great example of a card currently on the list that would be fine in competitive? Honestly, I gave it away. Braids was a big one before. But another one? Biorhythm. Look at the argument over the card Flash when that whole debacle was happening oh don't even get me started there was so much argument because players had different expectations for the game because on a competitive wise flash has no reason for existing whatsoever well as opposed to you know like say the casuals what are they going to do cheat in a big creature and it dies worst that could happen is this bear of the heavens comes down and you have to take another three hours to finish your game i've had so many people I know, get mad at a game of Commander because, oh, you're playing that card? That card's broken. Or, oh, everyone's playing good decks. 
<laughs> I, yeah. I mean, like, like there's some cards that you just like moan about. And say, oh, not Trinosphere again. Oh, come on. Not Smokestack. Not Winter Orb. Oh. <laughs> like, my personal pet peeve, and this is just my own, is Thassa's Oracle. Because even in a casual thing, it's like, this is literally the world's laziest win con. Because <laughs> you can interact with it whatsoever in a reasonable way outside of like some awkward stifles or stop ETB effects. And then, but also then you have to fight through counter spells because they're a blue deck. Right. So then you just lose and they're like, okay, in response, I'm going to get rid of my deck and I'm going to win now. What do you guys think? Split the format? Don't split the format? Why? What cards would you think would be on each ban list? Should we do a video where we create our own ban list? Hmm? That hmm? would be nice to see in the future. L let us know. Do you want to see more magic content? Do you not want to see more magic content? Do you want us to both get a haircut? Oh, you already got one. Yeah, I'm ahead of the curve, yeah. man. What do I mean? <laughs> uh, do you have any parting words? That rule zero is garbage. I said it. Rule zero is... Uh, uh, is what? It's the anything proof shield for everything proof shield for commander arguments. It shuts down so much debate because people say, well, rule zero. And I think that actually harms the format. Right. And it's about as stupid as like when you're arguing with somebody and, it's, and they're like, well, that's just because that's the way it is. Don't get me wrong. I love the freedom of commander. That's not what I'm arguing against. It's, you know, sometimes it's okay to, you know, set things in stone and clarify for players. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, you want to outro us? Actually, I would let, rather leave that to, to you. All right, let's go. Make sure to like Ooh. this video, subscribe, hit that bell for notifications. Make sure to check out our Patreon, our TCG player affiliate link. Also, you can buy some merch from our, our shop that we haven't plugged for like three years. Uh, there's also our Facebook, our Twitter, our Instagram, our, our Discord. Our Discord, you can talk with us directly right there or in the comments down below about what you think about this particular episode. And we'll see you next time. Thanks for listening to TCG Buzz. New episodes can be found on TCGBuzz.com. Don't forget to like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. For box openings, deck profiles, and more, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel.